Today, we're going on a six day adventure. We'll encounter all sorts of wildlife. Hey, bear! Suffer through endless mud bogs, traverse rivers, and experience one of the most beautiful places on the planet. We'll be hiking the North Coast Trail. Located off the western coast of Canada at the northern tip of Vancouver Island, we'll walk through wetlands and bogs, stopping only to camp in the many pristine beaches dotted along the trail. Once at Nissan Beach, we'll have completed the North Coast Trail, but our journey won't be over yet, as we'll visit the lighthouse at Cape Scott before heading south to finish out our vehicle 62 miles and six days later. But the start of our trip will be a little unusual. The trailhead for most people is at Shishardi Bay. Normally accessed by water, most will take the water taxi to get here. While we would have loved to do this, we've arrived late in the season and the local water taxi is retired for the year. Undaunted, I looked for alternate ways to get to Shishardi Bay and as it turned out, there are logging roads nearby. The big question mark would be, how would we get from the logging road to our first campsite across the bay? We were prepared to bushwhack it, but we had no idea what nature would have in store for us along the way. So with our van parked at our final destination, we drove a rental car along the logging roads towards Shishardi Bay. It wouldn't take long for us to have our first of many wildlife encounters though. First bear of the trip. Yes, hello bear. Oh, it's a big one, yeah? Oh yeah. Eventually our rental car could go no further, and it was time to start our adventure on foot. Start of our hike. We can't yeah. drive all the way. We want to get to about here. Four kilometers of hiking in on the road. It's heavy, Yuka. Yeah. As you can see, I'm wearing a cast on my right arm. That's because I broke my wrist in a mountain biking accident a few weeks earlier. It's also the reason we're out here. Getting out for a hike is one of the few activities I can do in my current condition. And though it won't make things easier... Oh, yeah, you fell over already. The North Coast Trail is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. As we continued our way into the wilderness, evidence of bears in the area was impossible to ignore. And soon we got the first view of our destination, Shishardi Bay. We've got a bit of a view here. This is the top end of the bay. And I think if we, uh, if we can get down there, it's gonna be pretty easy to cross. It's just a matter of finding the way over there. I was fully prepared to bushwhack down to the bay, but it seemed that it might not be necessary. So the road kind of ends here. And we went that way, but we also noticed that there's like a flag, there's a flag in the bush and kind of a trail. It ended up being not much of a bushwhack with a rough trail down through the clear cut. But once in the forest, we lost the trail a few times. But soon we were presented with a new challenge, crossing the Shishardi River Delta. We took the opportunity to collect some water here as it would be the only fresh source we would have in a while. It would also be where we saw our first animal track, that of a wolf. They're common around here, and if we were lucky, we'd be able to catch a glimpse of one. Soon we broke out of the forest and into the grasslands above Shishardi Bay. Luckily it was low tide and we could make our way to the western end of the bay to set up camp. The next morning, fog had rolled in, making for a chilly start to the day. After a quick breakfast, we headed out for what would be the most difficult portion of our hike, the overland section to Skinner Creek. It started out as a typical BC hike, undulating, rocky and rooty, with a few ropes thrown in. But when the mud bogs started to appear, 
Our progress slowed substantially. We now had to tread carefully in order to avoid the knee-deep water and mud. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> but every once in a while, to our relief, we would get a beautiful boardwalk to walk on. These boardwalks are so welcome. The mud bogs are just insane. Like just, just really uh, demoralizing because you're moving so slow and you just try not to go knee deep in mud and holy crap, I've run out of water so we might try to get some water out of the swamp here and boil it. We did eventually find a decent water source and though the water had a certain color to it, we could treat it with chlorine tablets. Oh my god, I can hear the waves from the ocean. Almost at the beach. Just have to smash through the mud. And a few more miles of mud bogs later, we arrived at Skinner Creek for some fresh water. It also meant that we arrived at our first beach, which was pure bliss after miles of mud pits. But we weren't the only ones here. The beach was covered in fresh wolf tracks. We couldn't see any around, but knowing they were close definitely caught our attention and we would be on high alert. All beaches must end though, and it was time to head inland through the Canadian jungle to get to our next stony beach. Not as nice as sand, we still made good time to our next camp alongside the Nawiti River. As we prepared dinner, I dried my socks and boots next to the fire, and we settled in for the night. The next morning, the beach was looking especially atmospheric. But soon we would leave it for a bit of fun. In order to cross the Nahuiti River, we would have to take some unusual transportation. Suspended from a cable, this car is operated by using its haul rope. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't get your hands stuck in the pulley. Once you've pulled the car to your side, you can get on and let go of the rope and gravity will do the work. Let go, let go honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, other way? I think we're too heavy. Oh yeah, we're stuck on the ground here. Okay. Okay, I have to bump. There we go. Bump more. Jump. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then it's just a matter of hauling yourself up to the other side. This is the most upper body workout I've gotten all trip. Almost there. Just gonna take the chain off. Shoot. Ah, yes. And with our river crossing complete, things were looking up. So far, the trail is really nice. After all this time in the wilderness, and with wolf tracks on the trail, you start to wonder about what you're sharing this forest with. After this trip, I want to see how often wolves attack humans. It turns out that wolf attacks are relatively uncommon, but if you do see one, be sure to make a lot of noise, make yourself look big, and slowly back away while maintaining eye contact. And don't bring Fido, wolves love dogs, for dinner. But as we continued through more technical overland trail, I had other concerns. So we're in a bit of a hurry, because the next beach we're going to get to, it can't be walked at high tide. If we don't make it in time, then we'll have to wait till the tide goes down. Uh, that'll have us burning a lot of time. So, so it's important that we get there on time, but it's really slow going through all this boggy, boggy stuff. Once we arrived at the beach, our concerns increased. It looks pretty high there. Well, let's keep moving and maybe we can squeeze through. 
As we approached, the surf was lopping up against the rocks. Oh, you got... It's handy, yeah? Yeah, but like, uh, I don't know, we might stack here. Yeah, maybe. Let's move fast. I think we made it. Yeah, that was a bit We're lucky, yeah? <laughs> yeah, if we are late, maybe 30 minutes late, and yeah, we couldn't... Yeah, we just barely made it. Yeah. And though our tide problem was now behind us, the trail would pop in and out of beaches via some very rugged overland sections. But a small sandy beach reprieve before Cape Suto was more than welcome. <laughs> the ranger station at the camp here had long been vacant since the end of the season in mid-September. We wouldn't stop here though and we pushed on, alternating between slow overland hiking and beautiful beach highways. But during one of these overland excursions, we encountered one of the locals having lunch. He's really big. Yeah. I'm gonna yell, okay? Yeah. Hey, bear! Oh, that's a big mother. That's a big mother. Hey, bear! So we decided to stop for lunch. Uh, it's not a great spot because we're kind of stuck in this little cove here. It seems like the bear went up the trail we want to go, so we we'll just give him some space until we finish our lunch. He moved pretty fast, huh? Yep. Really fast. Way faster than I can move. After lunch, we got to see a print our friend left behind. He uses the same trail as us, after all. He moves quick through this stuff. We even got to see a mink. I had no idea they liked the ocean. And even Yuka got to have an interaction with local wildlife. I touched the snail. The no, a slug. A slug? The gray and black slug. Oh. It's just right there. Are they slimy? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, 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 no. Slugs and snails aside, we continued our hike. And as a light rain came in, we arrived at Shuttleworth Bite Camp. With all the wet wood around, Yuka's fire building skills were exceptional, and it was definitely welcome after a long, hard day on the trail. Day four. We are walking on the beach. And what a beach it was. nice to walk along these long flat beaches but they always seem to end so quickly. That was okay though since we had some more mechanical fun in front of us. Our next cable car. Soon we would be back on the beach and it would be for most of the day. We find a lot of interesting garbage out here. Plenty of stuff has floated over from Asia. I'm just not sure why so many complete car tires are making it into the ocean. But along with this garbage on the beach were also more of our furry friends. We saw five bears throughout the day. They're attracted to the smorgasbord of shellfish and crabs that can be found on the beach. Luckily, solitary black bears tend to be pretty timid and they all ran into the forest as we approached. Hey! This last one had other plans. Hey, bear! Hey, bear. <laughs> it doesn't give a sh. Try a walk? No. Oh my. 
my god. Oh my god. That's just so cute. It's so relaxed. Should we go slowly? Yeah. Hey bear! Hey bear! Look at that face! Holy crap! <laughs> it's so relaxed, yeah? So relaxed. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye, bear. Our tense moment with the bear was followed shortly by something a little more morbid sea lion remains. A carcass like this would be a perfect meal for a pack of wolves, and it looks like they already got to this one. But our next setting would be a little more unusual humans. This was actually the first time in four days that we had seen someone else on the trail. They were staying at Laura Creek Camp, but we had some time restrictions and decided to push on. That meant a long, boggy overland section though, which really had us pushing our limits. But the boardwalks around Laughing Loon Lake were welcome, though we didn't linger long to enjoy the views. As the day came to an end, we arrived at Nissan Beach Camp and the relief was palpable. Oh. We did it, Yuka. Oh my god. There's nothing like taking your boots off after a long day in the wilderness. We just finished day four and oh, it feels so good to put your feet in the sand. <laughs> well, that was by far the longest day we've had on the North Coast Trail. We did 19.2K today. And uh, it was a pretty easy going on the beach, but then once we got into this last section in the bog, Oh man, we were running on reserves and it's just... <laughs> you know, you get to that point where you're like, I just want to get this over with. I don't want to stop for anything right now. And that included food and now now we're both really hungry, but uh, <laughs> I'm just glad it's over. So yeah, that's technically the North Coast Trail finished, but we've still got a little more to do, although I hear the hiking is a much easier. Anyways, I gotta set up the tent now before the sun goes down. Unfortunately, the next morning it would be raining. But with all our gear dry from the day before, we got off to an optimistic start. Our target was the lighthouse at Cape Scott, but since the trip would be an out and back mission, we would leave our gear at Nell's Bite. Along the way, an informative plaque grabbed our attention. It turns out that in the late 1800s and early 1900s, on the invitation of the Canadian government, Danish immigrants came to Cape Scott to farm and settle the land. The government, however, fearing backlash for establishing Little Denmark, dropped all support for the community and most of the settlers moved on. The government tried again and by 1912 there were over 600 people living here. But it was not to be, with most leaving by 1917. Not much remains. They did however build some decent roads, which we used to get to Nell's Bight. We set up camp and continued towards Cape Scott with the goal of seeing the lighthouse. <laughs> but the weather turned, and by the time we got to the sand dunes of Guy's Bay, it was raining sideways. We did make it to the lighthouse though, and although it's one of the few remaining manned lighthouses left in BC, the only life we saw here were these deer which seemed to enjoy the relative safety from the surrounding wolf population. On our return trip, the creek which Yuka had jumped over on the way in had tripled in size. <laughs> Soaked to the bone, we hid out in the tent until the following day. The next morning, we packed up and headed out. As it turns out, camping on the beach isn't quite as glamorous as one might think. Everything's covered in sand. Including my ass crack. 
That's so. <laughs> yeah? It's so. <laughs> Can I check? <laughs> Can I check? No. But our hike out along the roads that the Danes put in was largely uneventful, if even a little boring. But it was all worth it when we arrived at a lake with a familiar name. Welcome to Eric Lake, which I organized to have installed here. I had it shaped like a lake, uh, medium sized. It's a tranquil place, so no power boats, no jet skis, no water. You can bring your canoe here if you want, but it's gonna be a bit of a portage. You got a really nice campsite too. <laughs> Just over there is my really nice campsite at Eric Lake. And boardwalk is beautiful here. My boardwalk is very beautiful, but it's a little bit slippery, so be careful. Good advice. <laughs> After Eric Lake, the Danish roads started to show their age. And so did the improvements. When we arrived at the western terminus of the trail, its current state of affairs couldn't have been more fitting. I like this. <laughs> Two fallen trees, good introduction to the trail. That way? Wheelchair accessible path. As we walked our final steps, the sight of the van was more than welcome. After six days, we couldn't have been more relieved that the journey was over. Now don't get me wrong, the North Coast Trail was a hell of an experience. Yeah, it was hard, with the trail often in shocking condition. But for many, this is the reason to go. It's a raw, relatively untouched backcountry experience. The beauty and remoteness of this part of the world and the animals we shared it with made it all worth it. We'll look back on this adventure with fond memories. So if you have an adventure streak in you and can handle a week of tough hiking, give it a try. And when all is said and done, be sure to visit the nearby Scarlet Ibis on your way home for a well-deserved meal. But as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly. Okay, bye-bye.